We are just days away from Auburn football second scrimmage of fall camp and the quarterback positioning going into it. It's a lot different than what we thought it would be just a few weeks ago. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm and I'm, I'm freaking ready to rock and roll. You are locked on Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Joining us on today's show, Justin Hokinson of AuburnLive.com and on three. Hoke, we can't stop talking about the quarterback battle between TJ Finley, Zach Calzada, and Robbie Ashford. In fact, I didn't mean to, but uh, when I was reacting to, to practice from earlier this week, I ticked off a lot of people on yesterday's show, and I got sent links to your article over and over and over and over again. So you got a bunch of clicks yesterday. You're welcome. No, all, all joking aside, but the, I, I didn't think Calzada looked good earlier this week. And from a completion standpoint, you, you, you brought up the point of the fact of like, com, from a completion standpoint, he actually outperformed Robbie Ashford. Do you agree with that? From what you talking about, what we saw um, on uh, Tuesday? Or no? Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He looked better than Ashford. I mean, first of all, we see 20 minutes and it's against air. Right. Like we, what we see is not indicative of, of how practice is going to go, but it's all we see. So I'm going to report what I see. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think from what I saw, Calzada in the 20 minutes on the one practice I saw, Calzada was better than Ashford. Um, but, I mean, what's it? I mean, again, it's all perspective. Like, people need to understand that when we see a media – we, we have a, a, a viewing window. It's 20 minutes, and it's the basics of the start of practice. It's literally – running the route tree. It's like, all right, he's going to run out of the backfield, a slant, throw it over the next quarterback. I mean, it's, it's against air. If you're not perfect, there, pro- there there's something wrong, honestly. Um, yeah. It's the least pressure you're going to face all day and in, in practice. So, but Ashford, it was more, of, it, I probably took away from that more of Ashford just kind of had a bad 20 minutes. He just didn't have a lot of touch on the ball to me, but. Um, well, th- that yeah. was kind of my take he with. Mad at you, yeah with Calzada was when, when, when Calzada was up there, it's like he missed the first few and then he threw behind Warsham, but he caught it on the out route. And like, that's a mm-hmm. completion, but like, it, it doesn't really help you like against the defense. It's not really going to do anything. Then after thing, then after, you saw him just kind of lofting balls up there. They were completions, but the balls were in the air longer. Is, is that of any concern or, or are you just that it, it doesn't matter. It's against there. Um, well, no. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't draw a lot of judgments on what we saw. I mean, I think if we, yeah. I think if we just want to talk about the quarterback race as a whole, um, I think there's a few places we need to start. One, none of these guys are killing it. Okay, so so like, let's not act like um, even in the scrimmage on Saturday, it's not like T.J. Finley went out and lit up the first team offense. The first team defense. The first team defense. I don't think gave up a point, maybe a field goal. Like, so we need to start with none of these guys are just killing it. Okay. Sure. That's, that's important. Um, past that, yeah, past that, really encouraging, right? Um, past that, I think TJ's been the most consistent, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's where, you know, Robbie's not, I don't think as a passer overall, I don't think Robbie's quite there yet. Um, and he's probably, he's got the least amount of experience in game. He hasn't played. Zach's been the surprising one of just his struggles. Don't know what's going on there. Is it mental? Uh, is he having anything lingering from his shoulder surgery? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's all those are possibilities, but there's just something that's affecting his ability to be consistent, and that's allowed TJ Finley to operate the offense, to, to be a leader, and just kind of to be consistent. And Brian Harson. I mean, at the end of the day, he's going to go with the guy that they feel like is consistent or reliable, whatever that means. And uh, at the moment, that's TJ Finley. Do you think that it will be announced shortly after the the second scrimmage on Friday? Do you think it's announced within, I don't know, by Tuesday? Or do you think this lingers for a little bit longer? 
Uh, it depends on how the scrimmage goes, but let's just say, let's say this week goes normal, you know, kind of like it's been going. And let's say that yeah. the scrimmage kind of goes how, let's say TJ's fine in the scrimmage, Zach and Zach's better. Um, but, but TJ doesn't really do anything to fall down the depth chart and you come out of it and you're like, well, I mean, we would probably still, we come out of it on Monday and we evaluate film and they say TJ's still the guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what their plan is exactly for how they're going to announce it, but at that point, I don't know what you're waiting on because now you're getting into game prep for Mercer and uh, I don't know what you're waiting on at, at that point. I mean, what are we going to do? Have another, have another practice? Like what's going to change after a two scrimmages? What's going to change on Monday or Tuesday or, you know, um, so I, I would imagine they do the same kind of thing, watch film over the weekend, make decisions, and then maybe it's a Monday or Tuesday thing. Now that would change if, look, if I, I don't know what's going on this week. If, if Calzada steps it up this week um, and has a good week and then goes out and balls out on, on Friday yeah. and feeling doesn't look good, I have no idea what you do then if you're the coaches. Now you go, okay, well, gosh, it's kind of one-to-one, and I, where do we go? My guess is if it's if it went like that, my guess is given where things are now that they would lean Finley um, just because he's familiar. Like, I think it would take a lot for Zach to overcome Finley where we are right now, knowing what we know. Um, so, but the, so yeah, go ahead. Well, you, you've laid out the path for Finley, right? Which yeah. I think it's clear. You've yeah. laid out the path for Zach, kind of. What's the path for Robbie? Is it similar to Zach or are they kind of playing different games here? I, I think they're playing different games. I, I just oh, really, okay. I mean, I, I like, I think, I think Robbie's going to play like, so it's weird. I think I, it's almost like I think Finley and Zach are competing for a spot. And then I think Ashford's going to play um, okay. just gotcha. because I think they're going to find ways to get him in the game, whether it's speed option or, you know, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think he's going to find packages to play no matter who the starter is. Um. I'm just not sure where Robbie fits into trying to compete for the legitimately be the starter that I'm not sure that he's going to get there. I mean, I know he's, he's sitting at two right now. So we put on the board the other day, like legitimately it's Finley Ashford Calzada. Um, but I don't, I don't know that Ashford could do enough to over to be the starter with no, I mean, think about what it would take, no college experience, no game experience. He comes in and he gets named the starter over two guys who played in college games, played in big games and none of them are really Amazing. None of them are outstanding. That would just be a little surprising to me. I see it more of start Finley or Calzada, get Ashford in the game in some packages and use him as a change of pace type of type of guy. That's that's kind of how I see it. Like I think Ashford's going to play regardless. There has been shakeup along the offensive line. Uh, it appears that Tate Johnson keeps getting more and more reps at starting center, standing at 6'4, 285. Is Tate Johnson big enough? to move people in the SEC. We discuss that next right here on Locked On Auburn. It can happen so easily. You're you're out with your friends or coworkers. You're putting back a few drinks. A few drinks becomes a few too many. It's time to go in for a moment. You think of calling for a ride and you say, nah, you're a good driver. You live nearby. You can make it home okay. Well, what if you will get pulled over? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car or You could kill someone. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. Drive sober or get pulled over. Justin Hokinson, our guest here on Locked on Auburn. Kind of dark read. Sorry about that. Um, But (laughs) uh, you look at this offensive line, Tate Johnson getting starting reps at center. They haven't updated the the weights and the heights yet. So like he looks bigger than 285 to me, but what's your confidence level if they go into the season, if Auburn goes into the season with Tate Johnson as a starting center, what's your confidence level in the offensive line? All right, listen, I'll answer that. Can I go back to quarterback for a second? Of course. Though I just want to make this point because I've done a bunch of radio hits and I've tried to make this point, a couple of points to everybody I talk to and I want to do the same thing. And that is when a starter is named, I don't think this this competition is over. Like when you see a social graphic go out from Auburn naming a starter, I don't think it's well. That's it. I, I think that this this competition will go into the Mercer game, go in go through the Mercer game, go into the San Jose State game. I think there's still time there for things to happen. A starter will be named by Mercer, 
But look, if Zach starts, if Zach starts to click, or if Robbie starts to click uh, and understand the offense, and they start pumping out good practices, and maybe they get, maybe Mercer, they all play, and maybe one of those guys, maybe Finley doesn't do great, and somebody does really well against Mercer, there could be a reset like in there. I don't. I'm just saying, I don't think anybody's been so much better than the other yeah. that they're just going to name a starter and that's it. So I just want people to keep that in mind, at least to the Penn State game, and then at some point. You know, you want somebody to take the reins and be the guy. And, and Finley could be named the starter and be awesome. But I just want people to keep that in mind that I still think there's some time in there for practices and Mercer and San Jose State for good things to happen in practice to elevate somebody or to keep somebody in the mix um, as they go about it. Um, I just want to I just want to make that point because I did think no, I'm that's glad real. You did. I'm, I'm glad, glad you did. And yeah. and, uh, and I think a lot of people will like that you said that for sure. Yeah. Do you think uh, Do you think they're going to announce it through a social graphic or do you think Harson will do it as a at a presser? I, I, I don't, I think they'll do like a, a, an announcement. Like, I think they'll do a thing. Like, I think they'll make a graphic, make it, maybe, maybe, maybe have a comment from Harson on, on, you know, like that. I, I think that's what, like, I think they'll have something like that. I think they'll try to reward the guy who wins the job and rally people around him. And it might, you know, I don't know if it'll be a video, but I could see it being a cool graphic, throw yeah. the dude's picture up, put a statement from Harson saying, Hey, he, here's our starting quarterback. Uh, type of deal and reward him and just tell the other guys, Hey, look, no matter who it is, we're going to do this. We're going to create a graphic. We're going to generate a little bit of excitement around, around the pick. I could see that. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. All, All right. right. No, Tate I'm, 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 I'm glad Tate. It. Yeah. Tate Johnson. Is he yeah. big enough? What's, what's your confidence level with Tate Johnson being the center going into the season? Um, I, I, he's, I don't think he's big enough right now. Um, but I really like Tate. Like I'm no, I'm no offensive line expert, but I've seen enough football like to at least know that I like a guy or there's good things happening. And I remember watching Tate Johnson in the spring, and there was something that stood out about him. He just he had an aggression. Um, he was pretty athletic. Like I was like, I like that guy. And uh, and even coming into fall camp, he you know he does some good things well. He just lacks a little bit of size. He honestly, if this were 2004. He'd yeah. be the starting center. He'd be awesome. Think about Joe Cope or, you know, uh, you know Jeremy Ingle, like some of the guys they've had in the past. If Tate Johnson were 10, 15 years ago, he'd be yeah. a, he'd be fine at center. And he'd be like that that Tuberville type center. But nowadays, I mean, 285, and, and that's the high end. He's probably no more than 285. So yeah. that's, a, that's a concern to me. I mean, Jordan Davis is a freak. But, he, I mean, gosh, Auburn's got a dude, Jason Jones, sitting on the other side. Most teams now are going to have probably a 315-pounder over there. In the SEC, that's, there's no question. Yeah, yeah, that's, athletic, a, that's, that's, a concern. Pound. that's a concern. Yeah. So, um, if he's the guy, I don't know. I mean, I think Jaleel Irvin started in the in the Houston game, and I thought did some good things. Um, he seems really? like a more prepared option. Um, he was he was the um, he was the third string center, right? And, and what Jaleel? we saw, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't know where he fits. I've seen Irvin at center. I've seen Tate at center. I've seen Council at center. I've seen all these guys play. I've yeah. seen Irvin at guard. I've seen Tate at guard. Um, but Tate's been taking those center reps since, gosh, I mean, go back to the very beginning of fall camp. Brahms was practicing, and then Tate was in there. So I like a lot of things about Tate Johnson. It's just you can't you can't overcome the size thing, no matter how aggressive or whatever. That's just – you know, that's a tough thing if you go against these SEC defenses and you're a little undersized. Yeah. I don't know how you get around that. So, yeah, that's a concern. And, I mean, and I, I don't know how it's not a concern. Right. I do like the guys that are next to him, um, Cam Stutz and Keandre Jones, as of Tuesday. That's what we saw. Yeah. I like that those guys are bigger kind of movers, borderline maulers. I think it's kind of what they want to be. We'll see if they can pull that off. I, I like that they're next to him. And you can do a lot of combo stuff, and, and we'll see how much of that they do. But um, I think there is a little bit of a cause con for concern there. I mean, especially when you look at, like, with what Brahms did last year. I mean, just that push in the interior offensive line wasn't really there that much last season. Yeah. Well, and then and then the other, the other point is, you know, what do you lose if Nick Brahms can't go? What do you lose in terms of leadership, communication, pointing out blitzes, is Tate ready in all those regards? Is he ready to snap, you know, the quarterback center exchange is all that good. Um, right. You know, what do you lose from a leadership standpoint when, if Brahms weren't to play and Tate's in there, just calling things out, getting guys organized um, that I don't know much about, but you've got to figure you're going to lose something there. 
Um, the good thing for Auburn is you have those two games. So if Tate's the guy, you you, you maybe have two games to sort of get his feet wet. Um, and then even Penn State at the big game, but really you have three games before conference play. Like, so you can work a lot of kinks out before SEC play hits. That that gives you a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, you know, I guess leeway in there to kind of make things happen. A little margin for error, if you will. I have been, I guess, pleasantly surprised about how solid they are with their tackles. I mean, since day one of practice, it's been the same yeah. two guys at, at left and right tackle with Killian Dyer at left and Austin Troxel at right. I think that's a good thing. I think I thought they were going to rotate the tackles out and keep the interior the same. I thought there were fewer questions there and then things have happened, obviously, but that's got to be a good thing going into the season, just the stability at tackle. Yeah, a little bit of consistency is good. I mean, last this time last year, those guys, they're, they were just rotating everybody, trying to figure out who their best five were. Right. So at least there's been a little bit more consistency in terms of Zaire and Troxel and Jones and Stutz have played their positions. You've had a little bit of rotation at center, and maybe there's a new guard, but those guys have kind of been there. Um, and so that's got to help. Troxel, you just hope he stays healthy. I mean, that's the bottom line. He, just, he needs to just stay healthy, um, as healthy as he can be. Um, Zaire is, is, is a really intriguing player, very much like Keandre Jones, in my opinion, but Zaire, maybe even more so he, there's, there's, there's a level he could go to this year that he, you know, to, to, that he wasn't at last year. Keandre Jones, I think could, could too. And if those guys can elevate their game, that whole line could be better. Like, I'm not sure how much better Troxel is going to be. He just needs to stay healthy. Cam Stutz is a guy that's coming on, but I don't know where he's at. I don't know where his ceiling is this year, but Jones and Zaire, are guys that I think can go can go higher, and if they do, in terms of how they play, and if they do, I think the O line could could take a big step forward um, as a group. But I, it's going to take somebody really elevating their game and becoming way above average, becoming you know, hey, can Zaire become a third or second team tackle All SEC? Um, can Can Jones do the same thing? Can they Can they push to be a second team All SEC type lineman? If not. It's going to be similar to last year's unit. Pretty good unit. Going to get some push against a lot of teams, but against the elite teams, not going to get much push. Like, how do you change that? How When you go against Georgia, A&M, Alabama, LSU, how do you get push? You didn't last year. What's going to change this year? And to me, it's guys like Zaire and Jones who have a chance to get to that next level that could maybe make that happen. And we heard nothing but good things about Stutz all summer. And then yeah. I'm like, well, we're, that's cool, but – He's not going to beat out Keandre Jones, I don't think. And I didn't think at the time that he would be able to beat out Brandon Council. But it seems like that's happening. It seems like that's almost yeah. favorable to happen at this point, which yeah. is... he seems pretty entrenched in there. I mean, I mean, we heard yeah. great things in the spring and really since the beginning of fall. It, it, he, he's been in there as the first team. I mean, it seems pretty... Those four, if Brahms was in there, I think the offensive line would be basically set. Um, but he's not in there. I mean, but, but Zaire and Troxel and Jones and Stutz seems to me to be... I'm pretty locked in. Yeah, that's just that's what makes that Brahms potential Brahms news so like potentially yeah. devastating. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe they're turning the corner here, but perhaps not. Any um, I, I guess if something were to happen with the tackle position, who do you think that third guy is? Do you, do you think it's Coffee? Do you, do you think it's somebody else? Coffee probably. Um, he's he's been out there. We've seen him out there a lot lately. Um. He's been at both sides too, which I think is telling. Yeah, and he's a big, strong, athletic guy. He just, he just, you know, he just needs to develop. Um, but I, I like what some of the things Harson said about him lately. So I, I would probably, I would probably go coffee, um, and then pass that boy. I mean, Alec Jackson's kind of played everywhere, guard and tackle. Um, right. But I would think coffee would probably be that next guy off the bench. Um, but man, it gets thin in a hurry. I mean, you start, you, you get past really, if any of those guys get injured real quickly, you're, you're taking a step back. I mean, Alec Jackson coffee, that's, those are step backwards. So that is a position that, that the same, you know, defensive line, it's got a little more depth quality depth, but like you can't afford to lose Colby Wooden. Um, no. but, and, but and I, I did a show on this. A few, I did a show on this a few weeks ago, Hoke, like the defensive line works because you're able to have Colby Wooden. Like Jason yeah. Jones is exciting because he's next to Colby Wooden. Derek Hall's exciting. I mean, yeah. 
because Colby Wooden's on the field and you can't double Derek Hall. Like that, that to me is what, what makes it all work. Um, so, so I absolutely agree with you, but yeah, the, uh, the offensive line, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's thin for sure. Do you think, I think this is the biggest whiff across the Auburn community is that there has not been an NIL deal with however many coffee shops are in town that there's not one for Brandon coffee like that. That is the most ridiculous and outrageous thing that I've ever seen. Well, you can make it happen. Um, probably as well as, um, you know, any NIL efforts at the moment from Auburn. Um, that's, I would say the whiff is Auburn NIL as a whole. Yikes. Um, it's just went- not been, not been super organized. Good things are happening. I, I should say, I mean, I think, on to victory, I think what they're doing, not to go down the NIL rabbit hole, but I, I do it think on like to victory better. is, it, I, that, well, that's going to be, that's going to be the one. It's going to be the one. It's got the resources and the backing. That will be Auburn's main collective that gets things done. And when we say get things done, we're talking mainly about football and basketball. Go right. out and get a stud if we need to get a stud. They're not there yet. It's, it's being organized now. It's They're behind the eight ball. But that will be the group that I think can maybe make some of those opportunities happen um, down the road. So good things good things are happening there. It's just late to the late to the party. And, and to be fair, like most schools are late to the party. Like very few have it figured out. Even the ones you think you look from the outside have it figured out, they don't. I mean, there's very few that have got this thing figured out. There's a lot of rogue stuff and wild stuff going on. But yeah. – um, Regardless, Auburn's been behind the eight ball and it's hurt him on the recruiting trail. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see it. Hopefully it gets cleaned up soon. All right, Hoke, I, w- I want to talk about some of the biggest surprises in fall camp so far in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Got to tell you about our friends at betonline.net. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, games, and more. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports. Uh, they even got golf. So check it all out. Bet online. It's where the game starts. Justin Hokinson, how can people check out everything you guys have going on at AuburnLive.com right now? Uh, visit AuburnLive.com and subscribe. Take the take the dollar out of your pocket or the four quarters you got in the couch. Subscribe for a year, AuburnLive.com, and uh, and you're in. Our growth, man, over the last year has been crazy. I'm, I'm yeah. we're really fortunate um, and grateful to everybody that's been a part of the community and, and helping us grow. Um, and that that deal, man, I don't know how much longer they're going to do it. What my decision on three is just giving the stuff away. Um, but yeah, it's a dollar for a year. So AuburnLive.com, subscribe. You're up and running like that. Um, it's a good time, man. Fall, falls. This, this season's about to hit, and it's going to be right. fascinating, one way or another. It's going to be really fascinating. I mean, either either Auburn's going to exceed expectations and be one of the stories of college football, or it's going to be a, a repeat of last year, and we're going to be having discussions on the weekly of well, where is Brian Harson's job? Yeah, what's what going to happen? happen. It, it, like one way or another, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a week to week thing. It's going to be really interesting. So we'd appreciate anybody that wants to go and be a part of it. Yeah, I, I did that. Uh, I did the a dollar for a year last year. Just renewed a few weeks ago. I was talking to to Cole about that, and we were waiting for practice to start. But yeah, worth every single penny. Be sure to check that out. Be sure to yeah. check that out for sure. All right. So my biggest, one of my biggest surprises in, in a positive way over fall camp has been Wesley Steiner. And it's not that I really thought Wesley Steiner w- was bad or wasn't going to be effective, but like. Brian Harson seems to love Wesley Steiner. Like he just loves talking about him. Um, that to me is my biggest surprise so far. Do you have a guy like that where you've been like, oh wow, okay, yeah, there's a lot more positive, um, there's a lot more positive vibes about this player than I was expecting. Hmm. Um, and by the way, that makes sense. Like Steiner's a solid dude, like communicates well. I, I can I, I I completely understand why Brian Harson likes him as a person a football player. Um, a surprise guy. Um, boy. <laughs> Anybody in the receiver room? Yes, yes. Steiner. So, well, is is Steiner? Why is he your surprise? Because he because you didn't. 
Do you think he's going to be better than you thought he was? Or like, Yeah, I think so. I think so. I thought it was going to be Owen, Papo, and Cam Riley. Um, yeah. And the, I don't think – I didn't think they would use their third guy a whole lot. I think they would right. run a ton of nickel, and we didn't see them sub out a ton even – even when um, Owen was healthy, like Chandler didn't play that much. And so I'm just like, okay, they, this, this defensive staff, they just want to use two linebackers primarily. I'm like, I, that's fine. It worked for the most part last year. I think yeah. the way Wesley Steiner has played in fall camp and the way Brian Harson has talked about him so far, I think they'll use three or possibly four linebackers this year. That, 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 that's why it's surprising to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would. I don't know about surprise. I, I I would just say a couple of guys. Let's say that that have caught my eye that I didn't necessarily have any expectations going into into fall camp, but I, I like what I'm hearing and I think there's an opportunity for them to have good seasons. One is Eco Leota. I think all the attention goes to Derek Hall. All the attention goes to Colby Wooden, and Eco Leota could be poised for a fantastic season. I mean, he's got the skills, the size the athletic ability, like he's got what it takes. Yeah. And Rock Bell and Tony said something interesting about when he came from Northwestern to Auburn, he didn't go through spring. He couldn't get in the weight room. Like he really didn't get into the mix at Auburn until midsummer. goes through fall, first SEC season, like a lot going on. Then he gets a winter, then he gets a spring, then he gets a summer, and now he gets a fall. I think that guy could be a very different looking player this year and, and really be a good bookend to Derek Hall. Think about the attention Derek Hall is going to get. Um, I just think Eco Leota is a guy that um, I, I could I could easily see Eco Leota having more sacks than Derek Hall and more tackles for loss. That's um, a fun. Like take. I could, That's a fun I could for see sure. that happening. I could see Hall getting the attention and Leota breaking out. Um, it makes me honestly people that remember. Um, it just came to me like it, it could be like for people that remember maybe 2006 ish. Auburn had Quentin Groves was phenomenal, but you know who is maybe the more productive defensive end. Marquise Gunn um, on on that team, and Groves was the was the was the flashy guy and was awesome. But Marquise yep. Gunn had this productivity to him that was uh, impressive, and he didn't get as much of the attention. I could see some of that happening. I don't know if you remember Marquise Gunn, um, undersized guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say another guy would be. Um, I'm really really interested to see Caden Bridges. Um, he's a guy that that we've seen out there and has pretty much stayed as first team with Zion Puckett at safety the whole camp. Yeah. And uh, from looking at him in person, he's a he's a good looking prospect. And so is because Caleb Wooden by that way, by the way, a true freshman. But Caden Bridges um, is not small. I mean, well built kid. Um, so I'm I'm really fascinated to see what he's all about. Good athlete. Remember talking to him, Zach Etheridge actually talking to him, talking about him last spring how good of an athlete he was. So he's a kid that I'm really, really intrigued uh, as to what he can bring to the table. And that whole secondary, I think, is going to get better. Yeah. I think it's going to get better as it goes on. Keontae Scott's going to get better. Caden Bridges is going to get better. J.D. Rim is going to get better. Um, mm -hmm. So like that secondary by middle of the season and going on, I think it's going to get better. But those are two guys on defense that I really want to see. Um, offensively, I mean, look, Damari Austin's probably better than I thought he was. I know he was a pretty highly recruited kid. I didn't know how he was small, 5'9". I wasn't sure, but he's done some good things. He's done some good things in camp and risen to uh, third string, legit third string. And yeah, I, think I, was concerned, I was concerned with how late he was joining in, in, in the yeah. summer and all that. I, I yeah. thought that would be more of an issue. But it's funny. Him and Cam DeBrad are like, no, we've been here five minutes and it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Demari seems to have a knack. Uh, and I think he's knocking on the door like, hey, how do I get carries this year, which is interesting. Um, and so, so that, that was kind of an interesting one too. And then you mentioned Camden Brown and my take on him is a little bit inverted in that I think Camden Brown looks the part and could be a really good player. I don't know what it says that Camden Brown, who, who's look good player, Camden Brown, it's not like he was a top 50 national recruit. I mean, sure. he comes in and he's the talk of the receivers. He's the only playmaker. He's, he's the guy like I, that's a little concerning me. I haven't heard a lot of, I haven't heard a lot about dudes making play plays at receiver other than Camden Brown. Um, I mean, I don't hear single, I don't think Harson's singling guys out. Like mm -hmm. Brown's gotten that a little bit. So um, I'm sure those guys are doing things in behind the scenes at practice, but um, 
you wish you heard other names than the true freshman at receiver making plays. That's a good take. That's a good take. I haven't thought about that from that angle, but um, you're right. You're right. He's always the the playmaker of the day, it seems like. And it's like, where are all these other guys? So that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, one more time, where can people uh, sign up for everything you got going on? AuburnLive.com. That's it. Click the top. One dollar, one year. Click it. Pay your dollar. Be a part of the community for a year, man. You won't regret it. I promise. Yep. Yep. Do that. AuburnLive.com for sure. Hey, if you've made it this far into the video, go ahead and click subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, it means a ton. And if you're listening on audio, uh, please leave five stars. If you're listening on iTunes, that would mean a ton. You can find all my written work at AuburnDaily.com and follow me on Twitter at Z Blackerby. We will wrap up our week together tomorrow right here on Locked on Auburn. 